Welcome to Stockholm and the announcement of the finalist in the Climate Smart Cities Challenge. Or as we say in Swedish, hey, which means hello. I'm Per Granqvist and I have the privilege of being your host during this event. As you're all aware, cities hold the key to a climate neutral future. More than half of the world's population live in cities. The Climate Smart City Challenge is an open competition to identify a solution to reduce the climate impact of Bogota in Colombia, Bristol, United Kingdom, Curitiba in Brazil, and Makindie Sabagabo in Uganda. Launched by the UN and Sweden in November 2021, this competition will hopefully accelerate the shift to climate neutral cities. So this is a hands-on walking the talk challenge. As you might remember, we launched this global competition at the World Expo in Dubai during a hot day a little more than two months ago. Today we come to you live from Stockholm, uh, where we got quite a lot of snow during the night. Uh, that didn't happen in Dubai, and I calculated the di temperature difference between our two events to 36 degrees Celsius. Anyway, another difference between these two events is that now we have completed the first section of this competition and we have a bunch of finalists. It has been a truly global experience, global, global challenge. We received 179 entries from 35 countries. The jury has now selected 45 finalists that will soon be combined into teams that will share 400,000 euros. However, the prize money isn't really the thing here. It's about collaborating across sectors, borders and knowledge areas. That's the thing. That's what makes this so special. The finalists have now started to work closely with our four cities. They will do start working closely with our four cities, learning more about the challenges, collaborate on solutions and ultimately four teams to tackle solutions to real world problems. More on that later. Today we're going to know, get to know a few of those, but this event is also an opportunity for the finalists to get to know our partners, our cities and what will happen next. This is not an event of long conversations, rather we arranged in a way that you will hear from a lot of voices in a short period of time, sort of a mosaic of perspectives on the importance and the potential of a challenge like this one. Most of our speakers only have a minute or two to their disposal and I will cut them off, I promise you, if they go off. But let's kick this off by hearing about the ambitions going forward. I'll start off with Ulle Armstrong Dix, the co lead of Climate Smart Cities Challenge by Albert Cities. Thank you so much, Per, and good to see you uh, again, although at the distance this time. So, with the Climate Smart Cities Challenge, we want to accelerate the shift to climate neutral cities by empowering innovators and city stakeholders uh, in order to get them to collaborate. We also want to mobilize. 300 million euro in climate smart investments. And last year, we selected four cities with strong ambitions and well-formulated challenges to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and beyond. Today, I'm excited about showcasing finalist innovators from all over the world. And many of the finalists will form teams that demonstrate their solutions in the four cities. I'm grateful for the strong collaboration with all partners of Climate Smart City Challenge, including Linova and the Swedish Energy Agency. And all this wouldn't have been possible without a deep collaboration with UN Habitat and the UN Agency for Cities. Today, you'll hear from many of the partners within the initiative. Uh, we are a quite diverse group that look forward to collaborate with all you finalists uh, on the transition to climate neutral cities. And to all finalists, consider today as a first hello or hey, as we say in Swedish, in many meetings to come. I look forward to getting to know all of you better. And let's now hear from the other co-lead, which is Pontus Westerberg of UN Habitat. Thank you, Per. Wow, what a journey the last year has been. It's been an amazing experience working so closely with these four really committed cities and to understand their uh, climate challenges better and their ambitions uh, with solving them. Uh, it's also been amazing, of course, working with our fantastic and diverse project team uh, and our partner organizations, especially Bible Cities and Nesta Challenges. The Climate Smart Cities Challenge has really delivered above my expectations so far. Uh, I had a hunch uh, that an open innovation competition like this would work, but you don't really know until you see the entrance. And, but now looking at the, at the list of finalists, 
uh, which includes tech startups, house builders, investors, community-based organizations, and green energy solutions. I'm really, really excited about the next steps. But the real work starts now, and I look forward to working with all of you on this journey to solve the climate crisis. Thank you. And to get that work going, we, it's all about making international collaboration work. We asked Maria Johansson, Head of Societal Development Department at Vinova, the Swedish Innovation Agency, to share their view on collaboration across borders. This. Thank you. Innovative, innovative solutions and international co creation is necessary and will speed up the process to contribute to the climate neutrality and reduce greenhouse gas emissions in cities and on our planet. That's what makes uh, Climate Smart City Challenge motivating and why some, so many have applied. Uh, we don't need more tech projects, we must transform systems that include relevant stakeholders, address policies, regulations, business models, behavior, culture and infrastructure, but also include uh, technical innovation. And that's what makes this challenge interesting and that's why we at Vinova, Sweden's innovation agency, uh, support this initiative and we're really looking forward to what it's going to be. Thank you. The promise of a challenge like this is the potential of achieving transformative change towards climate neutral and smart cities, which is something our next speaker knows quite a lot about. That's Olga Kordas, Program Director of Viable Cities, which is a Swedish government-funded strategic innovation program. Yes, and I join uh, UN Habitat and Pontus with WOW. And many thanks to the cities and all organizations who participate in the Climate Smart City Challenge. And many thanks to our partners for making this happen. For viable cities, it's clear that the low hanging fruits or fragmented technical solutions are not enough to achieve the mission on climate neutral and sustainable cities. We need to have system level transformation as Maria told us across different levels of technology, regulations, financing, behaviors, and others. And this means that we cannot focus on a single solutions. We need to use portfolio approach and also allow us for different pathways towards our mission. And this is how it sounds complex, and it is, but together we are making the transition possible. And I'm sure we will do a brilliant work together. Thank you. So, to sum up so far, everyone is super excited to be part of this journey, but let's now stop and reflect a bit. Making cities climate neutral sound great, of course, but what does it really take to transition to climate neutral cities? To reflect on that, here's Thomas Osdorba, he's the director of Net Zero Cities and a advisor at Climate Kick. And those are the two centerpieces for EU's mission of achieving climate smart cities by 2030. And we've given Thomas slightly more, more time than just a minute. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here and uh, congratulations to all the work that's been done. Um, yeah, I feel a little bit, um, I feel a little bit undeserving of having the extra time, but I, I wanted to just share a few thoughts and observations based on um, maybe way too many years of working on this um, on this work. But <clears throat> when I when I think about my time working for cities on their climate action plans, uh, the shift away from the climate action planning that they have been doing or are doing to a climate neutral objective, really is a big change. It's not simply about going faster, it's about doing things in different ways. Um, and we need to shift away from individual actions to collective actions. And that doesn't mean individuals don't have a role, that's not really true. It's that we need to aggregate demand and act in much larger ways um, than we have been previously. <clears throat> that requires us to embrace learning. Uh, when, when we first started looking at uh, climate neutral targets in 2006 uh, in the city of Vancouver, we very quickly had a clear idea of what had to be done. We knew the building work, the work that needed to be done in buildings, the work that needed to be done in mobility and, and, and waste and, and recycling. What we really needed to do was embrace uh, focusing our attention and learning how to do that. It wasn't enough to put in a plan, here are our targets in these areas. We had to really 
begin a process of learning. And, and I think that harks back to uh, Olga's comment around, you know, developing portfolios, looking at ways to experiment uh, and test. And those are challenging things to do in the context of city government. And so one of our jobs uh, through Net Zero Cities and the city's mission in, in Europe is to bring the tools and resources to cities so that they can begin to experiment and test and learn faster about how to change how they're going about their climate work. We've learned a great deal um, from uh, cities across Sweden who are working together in a program Olga's leading called Viable Cities and how they're using specific tools and techniques uh, to work together, to accelerate their work, to change governance. Um, and those are called climate city contracts. And we're seeing those um, about to be tested throughout Europe as part of this mission. Uh, and we'll be helping uh, cities in various countries try different variations of how to use contracts in order to move away from individual to collective action to enable cities to take governance decisions that allow them to move farther faster. Um, <clears throat> I think a good example of that, because I, I like to bring specifics wherever possible, in the city of Leuven in Belgium, it's a quite small city, but they're looking at a green city contract that's a contract between the city and businesses within a defined commercial district with the idea that, that that contract should be not only about how the businesses are outlining the actions that they all agree to take together, but they're giving the city authority to take action as well on their behalf, because there are tools and uh, there are powers that cities have that others do not to be able to use procurement processes or align policies so that it makes it less risky for capital investment or what have you. And those are the kinds of uh, innovations and the kinds of new steps forward we'll need to say, need to take. Um, another area where we know we need to, to engage in, in this sort of testing and experimentation is around citizen engagement. There's been a tremendous amount of work around citizen assemblies and more direct involvement in participating in discussing, uh, discussing uh, climate action at the city level by citizens. And I think that's a really great step forward and we need to continue to help that grow and evolve so that <clears throat> we're supporting citizens and giving city governments and their key stakeholders around them the full um, authority to act, if you will, um, to get to climate neutra neutrality. And again, I think it's really useful to highlight that um, it's not simply about going from 20% reduction to 30%. To get to climate neutrality, you have to get to zero, which means everyone needs to participate. Um, and we all know, working in, a, in our fields, that not everyone's going to do that voluntarily. Um, and it doesn't matter how beneficial it is. It doesn't matter how clear-cut the case is. And so we really need to talk openly about the governance needs of city government and the role citizens play in giving government the ability to take action. Um, I think the good news is when we do invest in that time and effort, we find that some things do actually get easier from the perspective of financing, organizing projects, et cetera. And I'll give you an example of that. When we talk about building energy use, we, we all talk about building retrofits and building energy efficiency, or we talk about incorporating renewable energy into buildings or what have you. But to get to climate neutrality, we really need to think about retrofitting not individual buildings, but retrofitting uh, entire neighborhoods. Um, and when we do that, we're thinking about multiple things, not just better insulation, new windows, different lighting. We're thinking about the infrastructure that's connecting those buildings to each other because they do share infrastructure. We're thinking about um, being able to optimize deployment of new technology in the buildings where it's best suited so some buildings can get beyond net zero energy while others may not be able to do that. But if they're looking to work together, they can achieve a climate neutral outcome. Um, we also can recognize that technology then has a much better platform for introducing new emerging technology. Rather than having to go one building at a time, you can actually do multiple buildings or across an entire district. Uh, those are really attractive opportunities. And if you talk to anybody on the capital side, they will tell you that kind of scale makes everything easier from the capital perspective. Um, from um, managing risk uh, to lowering the cost of capital to better segmenting capital and blending it for different needs, 
All of those things get easier when we're working at a slightly larger scale. And that may sound counterintuitive, but it's critical uh, that we're able to work at that scope and scale if we want to achieve climate neutrality. I know I'm running out of uh, time. So the last thing I'd just like to say is cities also need to keep learning together and learn from each other. And that's one of the things that we try to provide in terms of the platform of net zero cities and the mission. And that's critical as part of this work so that cities don't feel like they're on their own having to tackle these very difficult challenges. So thank you very much and uh, good luck to everybody in your work. Thank you so much for that. Large scale implementation is an art global corporations have perfected. So let's hear from two of those, ABB and Scania. I shall also mention how grateful we are for their support, continuous support of this challenge. Let's start off with ABB. ABB is a global technology company with roots in Switzerland and Sweden that energizes the transformation of society to achieve a more productive and sustainable future. I'm going to hand over to Maria Sima, head of smart cities at ABB. It's a really exciting day. And I really hope that it will help all of us together uh, to shift and accelerate the transition to a more sustainable world. We know that most of the cities are struggling with strained or aging infrastructure, and with rapid urbanization, cities would need to deliver even more. District heating, cooling systems, water, data, telecom centers, and uh, power distribution systems, this all is needed to enable more comfortable conditions, more prosperous conditions for people and businesses, and better performance in overall. Technology is all around us, and working to improve performance in our infrastructures and industries. At ABB, we tie everything together with innovative, digitally enabled electrification technologies to help cities to reach net zero trying to increase energy efficiency, enhance resiliency, and especially now in the light of society's greater dependency on the electrical power and bigger exposure to the climate change. We're having operations in more than 100 countries, and we are excited about this possibility in this project also to leverage the best practices and successes from different parts of the world where we had the pleasure to uh, perform to have the ability to implement the projects um, and effectively building up on our own R&D and also collaborating with uh, bigger world universities and our cybersecurity competence. As a global technology leader, we are also very happy to share, scale up these expertise to contribute to the efficiency of the projects all over the world over the entire life cycle and share that expertise in, in this project. We can only win this race against the climate change together in collaboration with the partners. And in ABB, we're continuously learning about the evolving requirements of our dynamic worlds together with the cities, together with the customers, together with the smaller companies. We are so excited to contribute with these our insights and knowledge of the technologies that can be scaled up over the time, over the geographies, and have a better and deeper understanding of the innovation and also resource efficient manufacturing. These all competence can be leveraged and will be leveraged in, in this project in planning, deploying, executing more climate resilience structures so that the cities can develop sustainably. Innovation is our DNA, and among many achievements in more than 130 years history, uh, having invented the three-phase systems, electrified Empire State Building in New York and Burj Khalifa, and playing very important role in deployment and development of the electric vehicle charging infrastructure around the world, we're happy to bring these expertise and experience in this collaboration. We shall and we are continuously learning also from working with the smaller companies especially when it comes to finding more creative more innovative ways to support the transformation to more climate neutral cities it's a collaboration and small and medium businesses can benefit from mature expertise from worldwide expertise uh, and together we can achieve uh, clearly more also safeguarding the citizens' needs at the first point. 
And this way, this overall collaboration can unlock the potential of the smaller companies and the startups. And there are so many ways to explore that I'm really looking forward to. We're excited about this project and the next steps that it can bring for all of us that we can achieve together uh, for decarbonization of the world. Next up is another company with a long history, Scania. Founded in Södertälje in 1912, they are now a global manufacturer of buses and coaches and trucks, as well as engines and part of the Volkswagen Group. Juliana Saar heads up their sustainability efforts. Hello, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here representing Scania, and we are really excited to be part of this wonderful challenge that we will create a wonderful future for our and future uh, generations. Well, Scania is a global company. We have more than 130 years of foundation and we work with transport and mobility, moving people and goods from one point to another. Heavy transport is the backbone of our societies representing economic growth and development. However, the transport industry is responsible for 14% of all CO2 emitted globally. So Scania understand that we are part of the problem and we decide to be part of the solution, transforming our ecosystem of mobility to a sustainable one. Our vision is to drive the shift towards a sustainable transport system. That's the purpose of Scania. And that's one of the reasons why we decided to be part of the Climate Smart Cities Challenge as a supporting partner. These four cities, which are part of the challenge, are looking forward to this transition to a climate neutral. And it's a need to act now, as we are the first generation to feel the effects of climate change. And as well, we are the last generation who can do something about it. However, we cannot drive this shift on our own. We need to work in partnership with you and other stakeholders. And that's why we meet here today. It's about inventing new solutions, finding new partnerships and embracing new ideas. Climate Smart City Challenge is the perfect space to meet and to make these things happen. We have the, the technology today, but we need to partner to accelerate the movement. We see the teaming up with cities and companies as the perfect arena for this shift. As a global company with presence in more than 100 countries, we have a mature experience for large scale implementation, offering great value for smaller innovative companies and cities. We have also the experience to gather governments, authorities, academia, decision makers, and society, among other stakeholders. We have this experience to gather all of them around the same aim. And also at Scania, we have the attitude. This week, Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, the world's biggest asset manager, say, said in his letter to CEOs and not, uh, around the other relevant messages that every company and every industry will be transformed by the transition to a net zero world. The question is, will you lead or you will be lead? We know that the have that transport is no longer a hard to abate sector. So at Scania, we decided to take the lead and together with you, we are ready to make this shift. Thank you so much. Partnership and collaboration seems to be the buzzword of today, but it's also the solution. That's why we keep talking about it. And as you've seen on the screen by now, if you want to share ideas and, and, and insight you get, the Climate Smart Cities Challenge is the longest hashtag in the history of the world, but it's also the hashtag you're going to use today. You can also follow the progress at Smart Challenges on Twitter. So Climate Smart Cities or Smart Challenges on Twitter. As many of you know, dark matter is a term used in astronomy to describe a material that cannot be seen directly. 
And when we talk about transforming change, the transforming society, we're talking about things that are yet to be seen. So we invited Joost Bordeman to help us see the unseen. He's the director of Dark Matter Labs in London, a strategic discovery design and uh, discovery design and development lab working to the transition society in response to the technological revolution as well as climate crisis. And we asked him to give us an overview of the journey ahead and give us the case for system demonstration. Thank you, and it's a real pleasure to be here. And um, as was said, this is not just a challenge program. It's also a demonstrator for new ways of working. Um, and uh, we will absolutely need these uh, new ways of working together uh, because one thing that's clear is that there's absolutely no lack of ambition amongst all the parties involved. So the, the climate targets uh, that each of the cities have set themselves are, uh, are challenging indeed and ambitious indeed. Um, and um, uh, that means that our ways of working need to match that. And if there's one thing we know is that business as usual will not get us to the climate outcome we need. Um, these, uh, this graph is from uh, last year, and it already showed that um, with business as usual approaches and incremental innovations, we would actually not make the dent and the, and the transformative change in the climate trajectory that we need in the world. And that means that for the work we're going to have to do together, over the period ahead, that simply speaking, there is no such thing as low hanging fruit or simple solutions. Everything, technological solutions, uh, uh, opportunities that we see have their own complexity, uh, whether it is, as was said before, uh, the finance complexity, uh, the, the challenges in governance, uh, the need to change regulation. Every single uh, intervention we think we might like to make is always connected to a range of uh, other issues across society. Uh, and so that's why um, we see uh, this uh, project as system demonstrators. Uh, and, they, and they exist because so many of the innovation projects that we've worked on in the past uh, struggle to achieve uh, the ambitions uh, that they set out to, uh, to make and to make the step change uh, that we need. So uh, whether that is about uh, formulating the scope, generating legitimacy and participation across society, um, or, or achieving these new ways of working, uh, the, the, the approaches of the past will not get us uh, there. Uh, that's why um, system demonstrators uh, exist, to help us create these portfolios of connected interventions right across a system uh, it, that will uh, get us uh, to uh, closer to our ambition. And uh, let me give you an example of what that might look like. Uh, we've been working um, in the program that uh, Thomas Osdeba mentioned, uh, the, the, the deep demonstration on healthy, clean cities, uh, with the city of Madrid. And the city of Madrid has an ambition to plant, just like many other cities do, lots and lots of trees um, to uh, adapt to climate change, but also to mitigate climate change. So the challenge, in a way, is how do we plant hundreds of thousands, millions of, um, of trees? Um, and if you start looking into that, you quickly realize that actually what that challenge consists of is uh, a set of questions around uh, data uh, so that you can prove that uh, doing that isn't just good for biodiversity, for the climate, it's also good for, uh, for health and for a social cohesion. And that gives you more and more arguments to spend money on this. We need finance innovation. Uh, we need regulatory innovation to actually enable citizens to be at the heart of this tree planting ambition uh, and to enable uh, all those trees that get planted to actually be maintained in ways that are participative and, uh, and inclusive, and actually, frankly, also a lot more fun. Um, uh, and so what you start to see is how a simple challenge or a seemingly simple challenge, uh, namely planting trees, quickly becomes actually a, a question of a system transformation. And that is exactly what we uh, want to work uh, with you uh, uh, on in this trajectory. So uh, put it very simply, this is uh, an invitation. Uh, this is an invitation to, uh, to come together for uh, system demonstration uh, that is all about 
uh, the, all the different parties uh, in these challenges working on connected innovations uh, to really collaborate by seeing that what I can offer uh, is dependent on what other partners in this project can offer and to co-evolve our innovations together and thereby reach greater ambitions, connect to a bigger scale of funding and have a greater chance of achieving the success we need uh, as a global society. Thank you. Thank you. It's time to hear now from our four cities that are deeply engaged in this challenge. And we've asked each city to uh, give a glimpse of what they are planning for. And that's a glimpse, that's a, not a complete picture, but still. First up, Lina Marcellac Quinones representing Bogota in Colombia. Um, thank you. We are very excited with the results of this challenge. Uh, as everyone has mentioned, cities are the solution or the way forward in, in climate change, in mitigating climate change. Bogota is no exception. And right now we have uh, 67,000 delivered trucks and vans circulating in city, emitting 850,000 tons of uh, greenhouse gases and over 70, 700 tons of uh, particulate matter each year. And that is why we ask the innovators from all over the world to propose solutions to better manage freight transport in, in Bogota. And we are very happy with the results. We received 23 applications from all around the globe. 15 of those were shortlisted, and now we have nine finalists, and we are very excited to work with them in creating a solution that would help both the traffic congestion in Bogota and, of course, to reduce um, greenhouse gas emissions associated with, uh, with mobility, with urban mobility, which is one of uh, our biggest uh, sectors emitting uh, greenhouse gases. So very excited for this. Thank you. We'll be crisscrossing the globe here. We are now off to uh, the United Kingdom. Alan McLeod representing Bristol. Thank you very much. Yeah, we're very excited in Bristol as well. And um, as uh, Thomas from um, Climate Kick was talking about earlier, the issue of carbon neutrality is one that requires engagement across across a wide range of organizations and types and in Bristol we do that through our city office which brings together all of the different sectors and organizations in in the city to work on these challenges and in Bristol we face both a climate emergency to try and meet our carbon neutrality ambitions but also a housing crisis where we have thousands of people who need new and affordable homes and so the exciting thing for our challenge is the opportunity to deliver both that social element of new affordable housing that uh, doesn't just meet nice eco home standards for um, for middle class or upper class people, but also provides the opportunity for affordable housing for a whole set of people who wouldn't have otherwise been able to access this. And I think from our um, applications, we're really excited by the mix of finance and um, tech and different ways of looking at data, as well as new modular ways of building housing. And so Bristol as a city and our, and our team that's been working on this are really excited to get going with some of the, uh, the finalists that we've selected um, and to try and collaborate with them to figure out how we can use the full network of the city that we have to deliver on this complex and integrated challenge while solving issues around affordability, poverty, and tackling some of our ambitions in the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now we're heading back to South America with Daniel Morales, representing Curitiba in Brazil. Hello, everyone. Uh, we are also very excited of being part of this challenge. And I would like to say that the city of Curitiba is expecting great outcomes out of this, uh, out of this challenge. We hope that the selected projects can bring innovation and sustainability in order to advance our ambition of becoming a carbon neutral city by 2050. Villa do Pinhão and Villa Torres are the two pilot areas of these projects. The selected solutions in this challenge must be suitable and effective to our reality. So in the future, they can be scaled and replicated. And we believe that the mix of finalists that we have selected are uh, very uh, suitable to this proposal. We also expect that other benefits can emerge from these selected projects besides facing carbon emissions in our city. 
We hope that they also tackle social issues and income generation as co-benefits of a more human and sustainable city for all. We have received 48 applications and we are very excited with the finalists that we have selected and we believe that good results will come from this challenge. Thank you. Good results will indeed come from this challenge. Uh, we're finally now heading to uh, Uganda where Alex Kivumbi is representing the city of Makinde Sabagabo. Hi everybody, I'm excited to be here. Um, basically, Machindi Savagabo municipality is one of the fastest growing cities in the greater Kampala metropolitan area. Uh, the city faces a dual challenge of high greenhouse gas emissions from the housing and uh, waste subsectors, coupled with an acute shortage of housing. So we are basically looking for innovative products, services, or business models which can help build uh, carbon zero homes, energy efficient, affordable homes that can be developed and demonstrated in the municipality by 2023. Uh, our focus basically is uh, energy waste management, building materials, manufacturing processes, water systems, holistic designs. Uh, we are very happy with the, the number of finalists, 12 of them. And we are looking forward to work with them to address our challenge. Thank you. Thank you. And now let's meet some of the finalists. I'm going to hand over to Cathy Nordstein, head of Future Cities as a Nesta Challenge. Nesta has been a delivery partner, I should say, also for this challenge, which means they've been crucial in getting everything together. Okay. Thank you. Um, so over the last year, the Climate Smart Cities team have established really strong partnerships and working closely with these four cities to define the challenges and their impact and vision. And then in the autumn, we launched the open innovation competition phase to invite innovators to present climate smart solutions to the four city challenges. Our aim being to convene teams of innovators in each city that ultimately can create this portfolio of connected innovations leading towards large scale transformative outcomes. Um, so over the two month period while the, the competition was open, we saw nearly 200 applications come in from 29 countries, which is really exciting to see such a breadth and diversity of, of ideas out there. Um, these were assessed by a pool of industry and city experts. They looked at each application in terms of its impact, potential innovation, the technical feasibility, the business model, how they would approach users and affordability, and really importantly, how they might work together as varying components of a portfolio that could ultimately achieve this kind of systems change that we're looking for. So the four cities and the challenge partners have now chosen the 45 innovators that we are thrilled to announce today. Um, they've got expertise spanning mobility, energy, digital, AI, housing construction, finance, so many different things that are, that are coming together in this group that we're excited about. Um, we were really impressed to see the creativity and the enthusiasm that came across in these proposals. Um, and I think over the next few months, over the next year, we'll propose to see some really ingenious solutions begin to take shape in the next phase. Um, so what you can see here are, um, are the, the innovators that we'll be working with. Each city's challenge is complex and will require many different solutions to work together, which is why we've curated this particular group of innovators that can contribute to solving the problem in each city. The finalists here uh, will work with the city stakeholders to fine tune their proposals, to adapt to the city context, to form relationships, to create teams that can achieve impact in each city. In Bogota, we've got solutions that include things like AI platforms, digital modeling tools to reduce emissions from the freight sector. In Bristol, we'll be working with housing developers and investors, as well as some cutting edge digital solutions to create a model for delivering affordable zero carbon homes at scale. Um, in Curitiba, we've got a number of creative companies um, spanning across tech, energy, mobility, the circular economy. Um, there's a lot happening there that, that we're excited to, to see how that um, comes together. And then in McKinney Sabagabo, we'll have an innovators that are working in construction, that are working in design and energy, wastewater, and, and lots of other areas to um, address all the components around energy efficient housing. Um, so we're really excited to get started with this group. Um, thanks very much. 
Thank you. I mean, it's lovely to see that breadth of solutions and also sort of the number of countries they come from. Uh, as we all know, the more perspectives, the better. And we look forward to follow this in the future. And as we heard, the finalist is now going to be clustered into teams. To hear more about that, here's Stina Lanz, the program manager at Ignite Sweden. Thank you very much. And it feels really great to be at this point uh, in this process uh, when we start to see uh, see these forms, uh, and especially the finalists. Uh, well, uh, we in Ignite have been working with cities uh, for a while, and we can really see and we really believe truly in that when cities are brave and creative, the potential impact is enormous. And we are really looking forward to start working closely now with these teams, and especially with, with all of the finalists, to get to know them really, really well and uh, support them in the team creation phase. And by in a couple of months, uh, I would say, uh, they will have concrete uh, submissions uh, for how to work towards this uh, real disruptive change, the system demonstrators uh, that we really need. So uh, we are very happy to be a part of, of this really game-changing initiative. And uh, it's also very much learning for all of us, I think, in all of our organizations that we're doing together as we speak. And uh, yeah, really looking forward to the next phase now. So do we all. The Climate Smart Cities Challenge is an enormous effort, not only in the scope and the scale, but also from everybody involved. And the ambition here, as you've heard, is to do things that haven't been done before. And some parts of it may even be things people say cannot be done. But the ones that are actually going to do it are these 45 finalists that will now be part of this journey going forward. And on behalf of the UN, Sweden and the four cities, welcome on board, everybody. With this, it's time to say goodbye from Stockholm. And I'd like to do it with a quote from the founder of IKEA, who always had an optimistic outlook on the future. He said something along the lines of, most things are yet to be done. What a wonderful future this is. With this, I say hey, då, or goodbye from Stockholm, and look forward to the journey that lies ahead. <laughs>